Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the 3-2-3 formation at the 9v9 youth soccer level. So let's go! So guys, I've had several requests to increase the amount of 9v9 videos that I have on the channel. So today we're talking about the 3-2-3 formation. As some of you probably know, my preferred formation at 9v9 is the 4-3-1. And I have a whole series of videos on that formation. But the 3-2-3 has its place. Today, we're going to introduce the shape, the starting positions, and then go over our initial build-up play. The 3-2-3 formation consists of having three players along the back line. One center back, two full backs. The midfield consists of two midfielders who can either play side by side like this or staggered like this, where one is a little deeper, one is a little bit more of the field. You then have three in your front line, which consists of a central striker and two wings. I mentioned that my preferred formation at 9v9 is the 4-3-1. The 4-3-1 consists of a four-person back line, and the midfield is set up with three in the middle, along with a striker up top. So what are the advantages of the 3-2-3 and when would I consider using that formation? Number one right off the bat is if you want to defend with a back three. So to play a 4-3-1 or any system where you have two center backs, both of those players have to be very strong players and a lot of times a team might only have one player who can really play back there or one strong defender. So you put them in the middle of a 3-2-3 and try to clog up that middle and you add an, another defender in that back line. So when you're defending, you now have three instead of two back there. A situation where you might want to defend with three in the back is if you're playing a team that's significantly stronger than you. So maybe you're looking to sit back, defend and counter. You're going to want that extra person in there, um, especially if you don't have two particularly strong center backs. Number two, you want to take advantage of the wide areas. So in the 3-2-3, you'll notice that you will have a fullback as well as a wing. So you have two people in those wide channels versus one. You can see that in the 4-3-1, you actually have just a single player in the wide spaces. The third reason that you would want to use this formation is let's say you have a lot of attacking players. So you want to try to get numbers forward and you want three people in your front line to attack. All right, so starting positions on our build out. The two fullbacks will take the place of where the center backs are in the build up on a 4 3 1. So the, the two fullbacks in this situation are going to line up right on the 18. The center center back, or the single center back here, is going to line up right around the arch. The two midfielders are going to take up equal spots in the center of the field. So right here like this. And the wings have to start high and wide like this. And the striker can just stay right here high up the field, really in the center of the field. If you guys are asking yourself, why does this 3-2-3 build up in the defensive third look eerily similar to the 4-3-1 build up? Well, that's because they're the same. The only difference though is that the center backs are actually the full backs in the 3-2-3 formation. And your fullbacks, the wide players, are actually those wings who have to come down. All right, guys, so let's walk through a couple of build out patterns. The pattern in which you're gonna build out and how you're gonna play is very dependent on how you're pressed. What I've set up here is probably the most common press that we're gonna that you'll see at 9v9, which is a high press with three up top. You might get pressed with two. Uh, but let's just walk through this and it starts really with our goalkeeper. So if you see three that you're pressing up here, certainly you, you still have these options, but the, the two and the three have to get as far back as possible. You want to create as much space because if you're going to go to the center back here, you need time. And a lot of times they've got guys right here at the 18. The other thing is if they're going to press with three up top like this, let's say they, they get really, really aggressive. A couple of things that we want to encourage with our goalkeeper is to go ahead and play direct balls. So everybody knows that I'm a big possession guy and a big build out of the back guy. But if you see something like this, a couple of things you can do. One is your midfielders can kind of come down and just be an option here to get out. And if they, let's just say, 
bring their, their guys here and they're really pressing them high like this. The, the, the other option is to just go long to the wings. So, so these are things you have to talk to your goalkeeper about. They have to get up and kind of look and say, all right, if we're going to get pressed high like this, uh, we, we might have to play direct and that might have to be into the midfielders in here, or it might be a direct ball out to the wings. So let's look at, again, they're pressing us here. Um, but let's, let's just say that it's not as as uh, aggressive. Let's say it's more like this. And we are looking to play to our our fullbacks here. I, I think I said center backs before, but um, you're looking to play to, to the two central defenders here. Um, or the, well, these are the fullbacks in this particular case because it's a 3-2-3. Three, three. Um, so once this ball gets played out, the wing on this side is going to come down and support here, really creating a 2v1 and, and causing this guy to make a decision. Uh, the two which we always encourage is going to take their space until, conf until confronted, right? So we want the, the 11 to have it to make, to make a decision. Either they come and press or they kind of pull back. Um, and if they come and press, we want to take advantage of this, of this here and play this ball to the wing. Now, one thing that you might see is you might see a press that's coordinated. So in that case, the nine would come over and the 11 would be here. So in this, in this case, um, the question becomes, can this midfielder get into this space for a through ball here, can we just simply go back to our goalkeeper and get out the other side? Or do we have the option where our central center back here, the four, can just be played right back to, and then we can try to get out, get out going this way. Another option to consider guys in a situation that looks like this, where you have a very high coordinated press and you need to get out is a ball over the top to the nine. Now, if in this particular case, the two is looking to play a ball high and over the top into a wide area where the nine comes in around to get. What you can't have is balls that are tried to be played into the center of the field. Uh, that, that, that can cause some very dangerous counters. What you're looking for in this situation is to play a ball over the top and then getting it to the nine. While difficult, it still can be played. And a lot of times, if you can get out this way, the the press will actually pull back and you can start playing out a little bit more. The other long direct option here is to play a ball to the opposite wing. So you have your right fullback here and he can certainly, if he has the skill, play a ball over here, over the top here into this space. Now this, this can be tough uh, for especially youth players to make that type of pass. And then you're again going into the center of the field where certainly if the ball is intercepted, you now are in big trouble. Just know that that is another option. Here's another build out that you will see with 323. Now, I don't recommend this, but again, this is something that you will see. And you see it typically when a team is trying to take advantage of one particular side of the field. So in this case, we'll just say the right side. So instead of having the central defender just stay right around here, what some teams will do is have that central defender come, come here and sort of be the right um, sort of initial option. And what they'll do is they'll take the right fullback and put them here. The left fullback will, will come over and sort of occupy space right along here. The midfielder on that side will come over and play around right around here. You will see the midfielder on the opposite side singe in a little bit and kind of occupy the space here. You will see the wing on that side come out here. The nine comes out all the way over here. And then your the wing on the opposite side comes out like this. And for me, this cuts your space and, and really makes it easier for other teams to defend this. But what you'll see, um, and this, these are usually teams that play a specific way, a very, very direct way, is this ball will get played in here and they will look to go direct immediately. So depending on how press were to come in, the, they, they very rarely will try to possess the ball, um, combination play, they'll get the ball here and then they'll either try to just loft it into the air in this general direction. So they, got, they have two options here and they're hoping that they'll win a second ball and be able to play like a 2v1 if you only have one defender back here, or this will be get played here and they'll try to play a ball all the way up the field here for, for these two guys. Um, and problem again with trying to build out like this is that you cut your space. So here's what this would look like against the press that we just showed. And you can see already that, that you're, you're limiting your options based on the space. But if you were gonna do this, 
again, let's say that they, they pressed you with, with some kind of organization, you, you're really limiting your options here. And ball would really need to be looked to be played all the way out here. Um, I suppose if you could play a direct ball to the wing, that, that would really be your best option in this situation. But you're looking in this situation to isolate a spot on one side of the field. And you know you could do this a couple of times, but once the other team understands what you're doing, it becomes really easy to defend um, because and this is all you really have to do. And you know the only way that you're getting out is by winning a second ball. For me, that's just not, not the way that I play, but just know this is definitely an option that you'll see and that you could use. Um, perhaps if you're down a goal and it's really late in the game or something, but you know this is something you'd have to work on. Um, and for me, it just doesn't make sense. So defending in a 3-2-3, as I mentioned, one of the advantages of this formation is you have three in the back. And if the team that you're playing is playing a single striker up top, that can be really helpful because you're going to tell your central center back that they absolutely have to mark this nine. Okay, and they have to know where that nine is at all times. So we're gonna start by saying that the red team is sort of attacking down, down their left flank here. The ball gets played into the left wing. The person closest to the ball, which is the right, our right fullback, our number two, is the pressure. They've gotta keep them in front of them, okay? A lot of times you'll see young players try to go win a ball out here, and if they don't win it, now we're in a really bad spot because their player is 1v0 pretty much, um, maybe 1v1 to the goalkeeper if we can get somebody over here in time. So really we've got to tell them, listen, don't worry about winning this ball, slow them down, try to prevent a cross. The last thing that can happen is this player gets behind you. Okay, if you win the ball, that's great, but you cannot let them get behind you. What likely will happen in this situation is they'll maybe the, the 11 year old try to do a 1v1, but he he's going to be looking for runners. And so this is where the relationship between the central center back uh, and the other players come in because the nine may start coming over here. And if that happens, the four has got to cinch over. Um, the four has got to cinch over either way, but especially if the nine comes over. The fullback on the opposite side also has to cinch over, but has to be very aware of where their wide player is because likely what's going to happen is this wide player is going to come over looking for a run here. So they've got to cinch in. Our two midfielders need to cinch in as well, looking to mark their midfielders and our our right wing over here has to stay looking to kind of intercept this pass here. Um, what we don't need to happen is we don't need everybody coming to the ball. If this ball gets played into the center of the field. Again, all we have to do is come and mark this person, keep them in front of us in pressure. What we have to be careful about is looking for spaces in here because this is where they're gonna to look to play the ball. So again, the back three has to communicate. The number four here has to keep the nine in front, all right? And if he gets the ball here, he cannot turn because if his back is to us, he's really not dangerous. Uh, just don't let him turn for a shot. And that's the, the other thing that can happen too is you can see that the ball gets played into the nine and everybody gets very nervous and starts coming over. And if this ball gets played out here from that position, again, everybody's got to shift over. The fullback on this side comes in over, the four shifts, I'm marking the nine, the two shifts over, but also needs to know, okay, where's my fullback behind me? And then again, it's just a shift like this. The wing on this side now comes over to sort of be this person up here. And our nine just needs to stay up. Um, one thing that you will see uh, young strikers do is kind of come down and maybe help defend. And, and I really discourage that because once we win the ball here, so let's just say that a ball gets played in here, you know, maybe it, it, it takes a bad touch off their nine, and now our eight picks it up. I want them to immediately look to counter and look, they play the ball up here to our nine. So that's certainly part of defending in our defensive third is what's that transition gonna look like? If the nine's down here, when that happens, when that bad touch happens, now we don't have any options to quickly get the ball forward. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me directly or just make comments in the comment section.